Okay, let's start the session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 900 session. Myself, Archie Dissen, I'm your host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We'll be there to help you out. Uh, then moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we doing. So answering your question, uh, we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework and we educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the Synergetics solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. What does Microsoft certification training does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, this is skilling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental level certification, we have AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we have many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we have AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Then certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have Emerging Technology Community for All, then Azure Tech Community for Punekas, Emerging Technology Community for Suratkas, Azure Tech Community for Nagpurkas. Then you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow the code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. Guys, we will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training, Mr. Smith Shah. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a training consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. Today's session, we are providing you AI 900 complimentary learning achievement batch. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch. Uh, make sure guys to follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming uh, event updates. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Good morning to each and every one of you and welcome to our webinar session on AI 900. My name is Smith Shah and I will be your mentor for today's session. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I've been in the data and AI field since the last seven years wherein I have delivered training to multiple international as well as domestic clients, including Walmart, LTI, Mindtree, Deloitte, Capgemini, and many, many more. 
so that was just a brief introduction about me now let's proceed with our session for today so guys all of you are gathered over here to learn about ai 900 ai 900 is basically a certification course wherein you will learn how to build ai models with help of azure okay or how to implement ai with help of azure okay so focusing on our current current session so what will be the agenda of our current session so guys i'll just mention the agenda over here the first thing that we will learn today is we'll learn about what is ai okay so that's the first thing that we'll learn we'll learn about what is ai you guys know that ai stands for artificial intelligence but what is it that is what we'll learn after that we will see how to implement speech ai service of azure and the third thing that we'll do is we'll see how to implement document intelligence ai service of azure the speech ai service of azure is used to translate speech from one language to another okay so we'll see how to use that speech ai service and the next thing that we'll do is we'll see how to implement document intelligence ai service okay fine so i'll just mention it over here i'll just mention it in short document intelligence ai service of azure so these these are the three things that we'll cover in today's webinar first we'll learn the basics of ai second we will talk about a ai service of azure called speech service third we will talk about a ai service of azure called document intelligence service all right so let's start with our first point in our agenda let's learn about the basics of ai so guys you guys know that ai stands for artificial intelligence but what is it so guys ai is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes first purpose is to get inferences from data and second purpose is to get predictions from data by inference i mean insights okay so let's suppose i have data of a very popular retail store called dmart now let's assume that i am a employee of dmart now looking at the data of dmart i am coming to know that more people are coming in evening time as compared to morning time so i will tell my manager that make sure that all of our employees are more prepared in the evening time to cater to the customers okay because in the evening time there will be more rush so looking at the data i am coming up with a insight right i am coming up with some inference okay so that is what you mean by inference the inference basically means insights the second purpose of using ai is to get predictions so let's assume that i want to predict something about the future so let's say based on how it has rained till the year 2023 i want to predict how it will rain in the year 2024 that's an example of prediction so if anybody asks you what is ai you will say ai is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes first purpose is to get inferences from data second purpose is to get predictions from data now how do we do that how do we get inferences and predictions from data so guys we do that by using something called a ai model now what is a ai model a ai model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process let's try to simplify this definition over here in order to simplify it i will take help of a example so let's suppose guys i have surveyed some of the houses in my locality and i have obtained their data so let's assume that i have information about area of the house in square feet and i also have information about the price of the house now the first house that i surveyed had a area of 100 square feet and let's assume the price of the house was 1 crore the second house that i surveyed had a area of 200 square feet and the price of the house was 2 crore 
Similarly, the third house that I surveyed had an area of 300 square feet and the price of the house was, let's say, 3 crore. Now I have a question to each and every one of you. Let's suppose I have information about a fourth house. The area of that house is 350 square feet, but I don't know the price of that house. I want you guys to predict the price of the house. So according to you, what do you feel? What do you think could be a rough prediction for the price of this fourth house over here? Anyone in the chat? You can mention your answers in the chat. So I have data of some of the houses. You can see that data on your screen. The first house had an area of 100 square feet. Price was 1 crore. Second house had an area of 200 square feet. Price was 2 crore. Third house had an area of 300 square feet. Price was 3 crore. Now, I am coming to the fourth house. The area of that fourth house is 350 square feet. But I don't know the price of that house. I want you guys to predict the price of the house. So, all of you guys have mentioned your prediction in the chat. So, Nishant, Santosh, Bhakti... Chetan, Raghav, Gauri, all of you have mentioned your prediction and you guys have mentioned that according to you guys, the price of this fourth house would be somewhere around 3.5 crore. Okay. So you guys arrived at a prediction. This was a correct prediction. But in order to arrive at this prediction, did you guys use some mathematics in your head? Did you guys use some statistics in your head? Yes or no? So Ritesh, let me ask it to you. Ritesh, you gave me a prediction in your uh, in the chat. Now, that prediction that you gave was correct prediction. But in order to arrive at that prediction, you use some mathematics in your head. You use some statistics in your head. That's exactly what an AI model also does. A AI model also tries to use statistics or tries to use mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. Just like you guys try to use mathematics or you guys try to use statistics to simulate what would be the real price of the house. Similarly, a AI model also, do that, uh, also does that. It's just that currently the data was simple, so you applied simple mathematics. If the data is complex, you will apply complex mathematics. Similarly, a AI model also does that. Okay. If the data is simple, you just need to apply simple mathematics. If the data is complex, you need to apply complex mathematics. Okay, so up till now, you know two definitions already. First definition was that of AI. So what is AI? AI is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. How do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called an AI model. So the second definition that we learned was that of an AI model. What is an AI model? A AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, you try to use statistics or you try to use mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let's look at important notes that you need to remember before creating any AI model. There are two important notes to remember. Note number one says that in order to make an AI model, you need some data. And that data needs to have some rows and some columns. You might ask me that, Smith, I have heard that I can build an AI model on image data as well. Image data is not in the form of rows and columns. What to do? Well, even that image data needs to be converted into row and column format by using the pixel values of the images. So the point that I'm making is any data that you work with has to be in row and column format. Then only you can make an AI model out of it. Okay. That was note number one. Note number two is that columns in the data will be of one of the two types. Either a, uh, there are only two useful type of columns in your data. First useful type of column is called a feature column. Second useful type of column in your data is called a target column. What is a feature column and what is a target column? Well, a feature column is a column that helps me to predict. Whereas a target column is a column that I want to predict. So. Let's take an example over here to understand the difference between a feature column and a target column. Let's suppose I have data of some of the houses in my locality. Here is their data shown to you on your screen. Now, my first question to you guys is, on this data, can I build an AI model? Yes or no? What do you feel? I repeat my question. On this data, the one that you see on your screen, 
on this data can i build a ai model yes or no chetan has given an answer chetan says yes and chetan is right because as per note number 1 in order to make a ai model you need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns and here i do have some rows and some columns so definitely on this data i can build a ai model whether that turns out to be a good ai model or a bad ai model that's a different argument but on this data i can definitely build a ai model okay so note number 1 has been understood by you guys moving on to note number 2 which mentions that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict so if i want to predict price then price will be which type of column guys om has mentioned that price here will be my target column right if i want to predict on price then price will be my target column and since square feet and city help me to predict price they will be called my feature columns okay so i hope with this the two notes mentioned on your screen are clear to you all right now proceeding ahead now what are the different approaches to create a ai model so guys there are two main approaches first is the approach of machine learning second is the approach of deep learning let's have a overview of both the approaches we won't go into the technicalities and um, the depth of each of the approaches today uh, what we'll do is we'll have a uh, overview okay so let's have a overview of machine learning approach let's have a overview of deep learning approach so guys machine learning approach is like using a knife whereas deep learning approach is like using a machete now i have a question to each and every one of you let's suppose you want to cut a simple object like a tomato or a potato or a apple in that scenario in order to cut a simple object which tool will you use will you use a knife or will you use a machete om says that we, we will, uh, he will use a knife om is right in order to cut a simple object like a potato or a tomato or apple they would use a knife okay fine so on simple data sets you are preferring a knife on sorry on simple objects you are preferring a knife right similarly guys on simple data sets on simple data sets that means a data set wherein the relationship between feature and target is simple to understand on such type of data sets it's better to apply machine learning approach okay on simple data sets wherein the relationship between feature and target is simple to understand on such data sets is better to apply machine learning approach to create a ai model on the other hand let me ask another question to you let's suppose you are cutting a complex object like a coconut in that scenario which tool will be ideal to use will you use a knife or will you use a machete machete right in order to cut a complex object like a coconut you will use a machete similarly guys in order to work on complex data sets a, that means a data set wherein the relationship between feature and target is complex to understand on such type of data sets it's better to apply deep learning approach let me give you an example of a complex data set let's suppose i have a data set wherein i have one feature column one target column let's suppose in my feature column i have pixel values of images so let's say in the first row i have pixel values of image 1 um then corresponding to that row in the target column i have information about whether that image in that image the person was happy sad or uh, showing neutral emotion okay so i'm mentioning the sentiment of the person present in the image so let's suppose in the first image the person showed happy sentiment in the second row i'm mentioning the pixel values of second image let's assume in the second image the person was showing sad emotion then in the third row i'm mentioning pixel values of third image now in the third image let's assume that the person was showing happy emotion okay so now guys i have a question to each and every one of you currently 
the relationship between feature and target is simple for you to understand or complex for you to understand have a look currently in my feature i have pixels pixel values of images pixel values will be between 0 to 255 okay so looking at pixel values will you come to know whether the sentiment is happy or sad no right it is complex it's not simple so bhakti if i give you a set of pixel values okay let's suppose uh, we have a image let's suppose a 3 by 3 image in that image will have pixel values okay the ranging from 0 to 255 so now let's suppose you have pixel values like this now looking at pixel values will you come to know that whether the sentiment of the person in the image is happy sentiment or a sad sentiment no it will be difficult for you okay so looking at pixel values and then coming to know that okay whether the sentiment of the person in the image is happy sad or neutral that is complex for you to understand okay so this data set in this data set the relationship between feature and target is complex okay muskan says pixel values are not mentioned what i didn't get your doubt muskan i assumed the data set over here wherein i have a feature column and a target column in the feature column pixel values of images are mentioned okay we'll have some pixel values of images okay so the question was uh, if we have a data set like this wherein the feature column has pixel values of images or wherein the target column has information about the sentiment of the person in the image now here the relationship between feature and target is complex to understand okay Uh, since it's complex to understand that means i will call this data set a complex data set and on a complex data set guys it's always better to apply deep learning approach okay so we know that machine learning approach is ideal for simple data sets deep learning approach is ideal for complex data sets okay fine now i have a question to each and every one of you so om when i asked you a question that in order to cut a simple object like a potato or a tomato or apple which tool you will you use will you use a knife or will you use a machete you correctly answered knife but om what was the reason for that why did you choose a knife yes yeah, so even gajendra had mentioned the answer but gajendra you mentioned the correct answer but what was the reason okay so om is saying it's easy to use okay so one reason is that ease of usage perfect okay so om you are saying that in order to cut uh, with knife it will be easier with machete you will uh, it's complex to handle a machete okay not every person can handle a machete effectively okay uh fine so you are right one reason any second reason second reason so one reason was ease of usage i agree with that ease of usage as far as cutting is concerned i can cut a apple with a knife also and a machete also okay but uh, you chose a knife because it was easy to use i agree second second can i say let's suppose om uh, you are working in a company and uh, the company has called you to shift to bangalore let's say you are not living in bangalore currently you live in mumbai now from mumbai you are shifting to bangalore now in bangalore you will buy a, you will rent a flat make sure that in your kitchen you have all the tools with you so now you are thinking which tool to buy now daily you will only work on simple objects like a potato or a tomato or apple so which tool will you buy you will buy a knife one was ease to ease of usage can i say second reason is cost second reason is cost knife will be less costly so let's say i shift to a new flat now in my kitchen i want to buy i want a tool that will help me to cut something which tool i will buy i'll buy a knife right because mostly i'm going to work on simple objects like a potato or a tomato or apple so i'll buy a knife one reason is ease of usage second reason is cost also okay second reason is cost similarly guys with machine learning approach okay so one reason was that 
knife is simple to use, right? Similarly, guys, machine learning approach is simple to implement. Okay. You, I mean, even a person who is a complete beginner in the AI field will be able to uh, create an AI model with machine learning approach. There are very few technicalities involved. Okay. So just like a knife is simple to handle, similarly making an AI model with machine learning approach is simple. Whereas, just like machete is complex to handle, similarly making an AI model with deep learning approach is complex. Okay. So fine. That was one reason, right? Ease of usage. So machine learning approach is easier to implement, easier to use. Okay. Whereas deep learning approach is complex. Okay. That was one reason. Second reason was cost. So guys, in with a uh, machine learning approach, what will happen behind the scenes is it will run comparatively less mathematical computations. Because it runs less mathematical computations, let's suppose I am doing the computations on some cloud server. Now in a cloud server, the more mathematical computations I do, the more cost I have to pay to that server. Right. So if in machine learning approach, I am saying that comparatively less mathematical computations are involved with that, your computation cost will be low. Whereas deep learning in order to work on the same exact data set, deep learning approach involves more mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be high okay. because of which the computation cost will be high. Okay. So remember the third difference between machine learning approach and deep learning approach. First difference was that machine learning approach is ideal for simple data sets. Deep learning approach is ideal for complex data sets. Second difference was that implementing, uh, creating a AI model with machine learning approach is easier. Whereas creating a uh, AI model with deep learning approach is complex. Third difference was that machine learning approach has comparatively less number of mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be low. Whereas on the same exact data set, if you try to create an AI model with the deep learning approach, deep learning approach will include more mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be high. Okay. Now, one last difference. For that, I will ask you guys a question. So guys, um, if you compare a knife and a machete, which tool will perform better in cutting? Which tool will perform better in cutting? Which tool is more sharp? Which tool is more sharp? If I compare a knife as well as a machete. Machete is more sharp, right? It is more uh, efficient in cutting, right? Similarly, guys, deep learning approach is more efficient to uh, make better predictions, okay, to make accurate, more accurate predictions. So if I create an AI model with deep learning approach, deep learning approach will give me more accurate predictions as compared to machine learning approach. It's That is what is usually seen, okay, that if I create an AI model with the deep learning approach, it will give me better uh, accuracy in terms of predictions as compared to a machine learning approach. So with this, we have learned about the basic differences between machine learning and deep learning. We have just covered the overview. I have not uh, dived into it. I have not dived into the technicalities. I have just covered the overview of machine learning approach and deep learning approach. Guys, did the overview make sense? Did the overview make sense? I have not dived into the technicalities. I have just covered the overview. It made sense to everyone? Okay, fine. I am seeing confirmation in the chat, so I am proceeding ahead. All right, so we have covered basics of AI. Just to recap, guys, first thing that we learned was what is AI. So we said that AI is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data. Second purpose is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called an AI model. What is an AI model? We learned that AI model is just the, uh, is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. Then we learned two important notes that you need to remember before creating any AI model. First important note is that for making any AI model, you need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. Second important note is that 
the columns in, there are only two useful type of columns in your data first useful type of column is called a feature column second useful type of column in your data is called a target column any other columns apart from feature or target are useless to you and you need to remove them from your data so there are only two useful type of columns in your data first useful type of column is called a feature column second useful type of column in your data is called a target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict so here on this data if i want to predict on price then price will be my target column and since square feet and city columns help me to predict price they will be called my feature columns after this we looked at the approaches to create a ai model there are two main approaches first is the approach of machine learning second is the approach of deep learning so guys what is the difference between the two approaches let's have a simplistic um Uh, understanding of both the approaches over here so we learn that machine learning approach is more ideal for simple data sets simple data sets means data sets wherein the relationship between feature and target is simple to understand whereas machine whereas deep learning approach is more ideal for complex data sets that means data sets wherein the relationship between feature and target is complex to understand that was difference number 1 Difference number two was that creating a AI model with machine learning approach is more simpler. So even a beginner in the AI field will be able to use the machine learning approach and create a AI model out of it because there are comparatively less technicalities involved. Whereas the same person might find it a lot harder to create a AI model using deep learning approach because deep learning approach has more technicalities involved. So it will be more complex for you to implement. Okay, that was difference number two. difference number 3 was that if i am working on a data set then if i want to create a ai model on that data set then uh, creating a ai model with machine learning approach will come will involve comparatively less number of mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be low whereas on the same exact data set if i try to create a ai model using deep learning approach deep learning approach will have comparatively more number of computations involved because of which the computation cost will be high okay then difference number 4 we learned that um, if you talk about the uh, uh, performance okay then creating a ai model with deep learning approach will always give you better performance it will the uh, accuracy of the model in order to make predictions will be more better as compared to a ai model that was created with machine learning approach okay so fine so uh, these were the differences between machine learning approach and deep learning approach i just uh, try to have a revision of what we had learned so far i hope the revision was also clear now moving ahead to our main agenda for today's session so guys all of you are gathered over here to learn about a certification course called ai 900 now ai 900 is all about how you can implement ai using the azure platform and in ai 900 it's not expected that you guys should know how to create custom ai models you don't you guys don't have to create uh, uh, your own ai models so what azure has done is Azure has created multiple AI models for you. So ready-made AI models are given to you on the Azure platform. All you need to do is just you need to know how to use them. And all of the certification questions. So when you attempt the AI 900 examination, all the questions uh, in the certification exam will revolve around how you can use ready-made AI models of Azure. Not even a single question will come. that will uh, ask you anything related to making custom ai models no so all you need to do is you need to understand how to use ready made ai models of azure that is what ai 900 is all about okay so in today's lecture we'll only focus on using ready made ai models will not create a custom ai model whatsoever will only use ready made ai models going forward in our webinars we will have different webinars where we will teach you how to create custom ai models Uh, so you can do join those um, future webinars if you want. But in our today's webinar, which is on AI nine hundred, we'll only see how to work with ready-made AI models. Okay. So Azure has created many many AI models, and it has divided it, uh, the AI models into different categories or different services. So let's look at different services of Azure over here. Okay. Let's look at different services. I repeat myself again. 
Azure has created many, many AI models and it has divided those AI models into different categories or different services. Let's look at the services over here. So guys, the first service is called document intelligence service. Okay, you can use this service. Now in this service, you will have ready-made AI models that will help you to scan documents and extract information out of it. So let's suppose you are working in some organization, let's say banking organization, you're working in a bank. Okay, now let's say your job is to open bank account. So as a banker, what would you ask uh, the person to bring? You will ask the person to bring your pan, their, their pan card, other card and all of that, right? Now you will take their pan card or other card. You will manually see the details in it. Then those details you will enter in your computer, right? That's what a banker does usually. If that banker is responsible for opening bank accounts, that what that's what he or she does. He takes the documents reviews it manually and takes the details out of the document and puts it in his or her computer. Now, let's suppose in a day you are expected to uh, review 10,000 documents. It will be very hard for one person to do, right? It will be very hard. What if this scanning of documents you wanted to happen automatically? Okay. Well, you have an AI service in Azure called Document Intelligence Service with which you can scan the documents automatically. So whether it's an invoice document, whether it's an Aadhaar card document, PAN card document, driving license document, tax document. Okay. So for different, different documents, they have created different, different AI models. For working with invoice document, they have a separate AI model. For working with uh, Aadhaar card document, they have a separate AI model and so on okay so that was about document intelligence service today we'll see a demo of it as well so you'll get a better understanding of it then moving on to the next service called language service okay so using this service you can go ahead and create custom chatbots okay so for example let me show a website called lg.com now, in this website, if I open up this website, you will observe, guys, that they have a chatbot integrated within it. Okay, and I can go ahead and chat with this chatbot over here. And uh, based on some input that I gave to the chatbot, it will give me some output back. Okay, so for example, uh, let's suppose I want to ask it that um, my AC is not working. Now, based on my input, it will give me some answer. It says that, okay, we are sorry to hear that your AC is not working and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the main point that I'm making is currently there's a chatbot integrated into this website. Let's say you have a similar website. You want to integrate a chatbot, but you don't have any coding experience. Okay. Normally to create a chatbot, you'll have to write some code. Let's say you are not, you're from a non-technical background. You want to create a chatbot and integrate it into your website. Well, you can easily do it with help of this service called language service. It will help you to build those conversational chatbots over here. Okay. Apart from that, you can also use it uh, to analyze any text. Let's suppose you run a cloud kitchen on Zomato. Okay. Let's assume that you run a cloud kitchen on Zomato. Now, through that cloud kitchen, you are trying to sell your food products. And any person who buys your food product has the right to review your food product, right? So he or she can put their reviews on Zomato. That, okay, whether your cloud kitchen was serving good food, bad food, whatever. So let's suppose you have thousands of reviews. And maybe they could be in different, different languages. Some person might have put a review in English language. Some person might have put it in Hindi language. Some person might have put it in Kannada language and so on. Okay, but you want to review all these, um, I mean, you want to analyze all these reviews over here, you want to analyze this text. Well, you can easily do it with help, help of language service over here. You can go ahead and analyze any text that you want. It could be in multiple languages. You can go ahead and do it. So there is support for 100 plus languages over here, whether it's Hindi, Kannada, uh, English, Chinese, Japanese, okay. So there are more than 100 plus languages that are supported. Fun. So that was about language service. Moving on to the vision service. So here guys, you will have access to AI models that can help you to analyze images as well as analyze videos. 
okay analyzing images as well as analyzing videos so let's say looking at a image i want to analyze what is happening in a image so for example if somebody shows you this image let me give you an example over here let's suppose if somebody shows us this image this one now in this image we know that a person is walking a dog right so i want that analysis to happen auto automatically so this analysis that i did was caption generation analysis uh, caption generation analysis wherein looking at the image you are generating a caption that okay what is happening in the image okay so you are a, a caption a good caption for the image could be that a person is walking a dog okay so caption generation is one analysis similarly another analysis is sentiment and anal uh, uh, sentiment analysis whether uh, looking at the image uh, you are trying to figure out whether the person in the image is happy sad or something then next uh, analysis is object detection analysis wherein in a image you are trying to detect the different different objects that are present okay and so on fine uh, then let's say in a image you have uh, some characters present some text present you want to analyze that that okay in a image what are the characters present what are the text present so just as an example over here let me go ahead and let me show this to you one second i will just go ahead and show an example over here let's suppose i have some images wherein there is some text in it and i want to go ahead and i want to read the text inside of those uh, inside of that image okay so i want to read the characters inside of the image that is called ocr optical character recognition wherein from the image you are trying to uh, find out the characters present or the text present in it okay so basically this service guys vision service is used to analyze images used to analyze videos okay fine then moving on to the next service which is speech service so guys using this service you can go ahead and translate your speech from one language to another okay so let's suppose there is a bilateral meeting going on between head of two countries let's suppose there is a bilateral meeting between our prime minister mr modi and the head of russia mr putin okay now uh, in that bilateral meeting you would have seen that whenever uh, these guys speak to one another they speak their own they, in their own native language for example mr putin speaks in um, russian language mr modi might speak in hindi language okay now what happens in that bilateral meeting you would have seen uh, there is a ear piece that is there in uh, the ears of mr putin and mr modi and through that ear piece they are trying to understand the translated speech okay so if modi is speaking in hindi uh, putin would have a ear piece in his ear through which he will try to uh, through which some translator will try to translate modi's speech from hindi to russian and vice versa okay but what if you want that translation to happen automatically okay because uh, if you have a person involved to do the translation maybe he or she can do mistakes okay and if there is a lot of load on that person let's say someone is speaking the spe uh, speech very fast maybe that uh, person might do some mistakes okay so what if you want that speech translation to happen automatically uh, with a much much better efficiency you can go ahead and take help of speech service so guys we are going to see two demos today one will be demo of speech service another will be demo of document intelligence service okay but still let me give you overview of other services as well what about translator service so guys you can use this service to translate your text from one language to another so let's suppose i wrote a book in hindi language now i want that my book should be sold in other countries as well but in other countries they won't probably understand hindi language so there what i i could do maybe i can translate my book in different different languages so i'll translate my book in russian language and sell my book in russia i'll translate my book in english language and sell my book in us or uk and so on but if i hire a person to do that translation maybe he or she can do mistakes while doing translation also that person might take a lot of time to do the translation okay well i can just come to this uh, uh, ai service over here of azure called translator service and that can be used to translate text from one language to another okay fine then the next service is content safety service 
this is used to make sure that the text that you are receiving or the images that you are receiving does not contain any offensive or inappropriate stuff in it so let's assume that uh, you are running a youtube channel okay and in that youtube channel what you do is you do live videos daily wherein you try to teach something to your audience now in that live videos you would have observed guys people uh, can uh, put comments okay and uh, to make sure that none of the comments are offensive what that uh, youtuber could do maybe he could he would uh, hire some chat moderator who will be in the chat and if at all someone is putting any offensive stuff in the chat that chat moderator will try to uh, remove that person remove that person comments or something okay so uh, this can be useful okay you can hire a chat moderator but maybe uh, at the end of the day, that chat moderator is a person. Okay, he or she can do mistakes. Let's suppose uh, per second, you are receiving tens and hundreds of comments. I mean, what will the chat moderator do? Okay, it will be very tedious for him to monitor everything that whether the text that is being received is good or not. There's nothing offensive in it. Okay, so instead of that, what you can do is you can come to this service called content safety service and you can use this service to make sure that whatever text is being received, whatever images are being received does not contain any offensive stuff or inappropriate stuff. Then moving on to the next service over here, which is called search service. Okay, so what is search service used for? So guys, it is used to do two things. One is to analyze text and another is to analyze images. But you might ask me that, okay, Smith, I can analyze text using my language service also. I can analyze text using vision. Uh, I can analyze images using vision service also. So what is so special about search service? So guys, remember when I say that search service helps me to analyze text and helps me to analyze images, it doesn't have its own AI models for doing analysis. For analyzing text, it will go to language service take the AI models of language service and analyze text. In order to analyze images, it will go to vision service, take the AI models of vision service and do analysis. But after analysis, what does it do? So once the analysis is done by the search service, then what it does is it tries to organize it. Okay, organize the analysis data with help of indexes. Okay, organize the analysis data with help of indexes. Now, you would have seen guys in your school time, you might have used some notebooks, right? For writing down your notes. And uh, during that time, I mean, why was that in those notebooks? The first page of the notebook was an index page, right? And through that index, all you are doing was you are trying to find information faster. So, for example, if your teacher came and asked you to show chapter number 10, you knew from the index that chapter, chapter number 10 belonged to 53 page number. So, you directly opened 53 page number, right? So, the purpose of index was to obtain information faster. Similarly, what the search service does is it analyzes text, it, it analyzes uh, images. But after that analysis, whatever is that analysis data, it will store it with help of index so you can obtain information faster. Okay, that is what the search service does. Then moving on to other services. So guys, other services are not created by the Azure team. They have been created by the team of a company called OpenAI. So if you have, if you know guys, uh, this popular tool called ChatGPT, I'm sure that all of you must have at least heard of uh, heard about it, if not used it. This tool called Chat G uh, Chat GPT has been made by OpenAI company. Okay, and OpenAI company has tied up with Azure company. So whatever models OpenAI creates, it makes it available on the Azure platform as well. Okay, so the uh, mostly they create something called Gen AI models. Now, what is a Gen AI model? You know what is a AI model? But what is a Gen AI model? Let's try to understand. So what was the problem in AI because of which Gen AI had to be invented? Okay, let's try to understand. So guys, in AI, there was a big limitation. Okay, there was a big limitation. And what was that limitation? We'll try to understand it. It was with respect to the target column, guys. It was with respect to the target column. 
now in the field of ai uh, what was the limitation with risk, with respect to target column so your target column could be discrete in nature or continuous in nature discrete means a column having finite set of possibilities continuous means a column having infinite set of possibilities okay discrete means a column having finite set of possibilities continuous means a column having infinite set of possibilities now if your target column is discrete it could be of two types it could be of numeric nature or non numeric nature that means your target column could either have numeric values or non numeric values an example of discrete numeric target column is something like dice roll so let's say i have a target column called dice roll wherein what i am doing is i am playing a game of dice with my friends and whatever value i get after rolling the dice that value i am storing it in this column so let's say when i roll the dice for the first time i get the value 6 then when i roll the dice again i get the value 1 then when i roll the dice again i get the value 6 then when i roll the dice again i get the value 4 and so on so now guys i have a question to each and every one of you in dice roll do i have finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities let me put the same question in a different manner so guys when i roll a dice how many different possibilities do i have when i roll a dice how many possible values can you get? Six values, right? When you roll a dice, either you can get the value one, two, three, four, five, or six. So that means you have six possibilities in dice roll. Okay, that means in other words, you have finite set of possibilities. So this dice roll column will be called a discrete column. Perfect, discrete column. That means a column having finite set of possibilities. But I know it is of discrete nature, but does it have numeric values or non-numeric values? You can see it as numeric values. So such a type of target column was allowed in AI. Okay, no issues with it. Such a type of target column was allowed in AI. Okay, on the other hand, uh, let me give you an example of a discrete non-numeric column. Something like gender. Let's say I have a target column like gender, wherein I'm storing the gender value of every employee in my office. Let's say the first employee in my office had a gender of male. Second employee in my office had a gender of female. Third employee in my office had a gender of female and so on. Now, in this gender column, guys, how many possibilities we have? Finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities? Muskan says finite set of possibilities, right? Even Prabhat has, Prabhat and everybody has said finite set of possibilities. Okay. So, as you guys are saying in gender, you have only two possibilities, maybe male or female. That means you are saying finite set of possibilities. Okay. So that means this gender column is a discrete column. Fine. We know the nature is discrete. But does it have numeric values or non-numeric values? You can see it as non-numeric values. So this is an example of a discrete non-numeric target column. So even such a target column is allowed in AI. Okay. What about continuous type of target column? If your target column is continuous, then numeric type of target column is allowed but non-numeric type of continuous target column was not allowed in traditional AI. Okay, let me give you an example of a continuous numeric target column. So something like stock price. So let's suppose I have a target column like stock price wherein I'm storing the price of a stock after every day. Let's say on the first day it was 100 point 257 rupees on the next day it was 99.4 rupees on the third day it was 98.57 rupees and so on so here in stock price column i have infinite set of possibilities that means it's a continuous type of target column and within continuous you can see it has numeric values or non-numeric values it has numeric values so this is an example of a continuous numeric target column which was allowed in traditional ai but if you have a continuous non-numeric target column, that was not allowed in traditional AI. Example of continuous non-numeric target column could be something like YouTube comments. Let's say I, want, I have a target column like YouTube comments. I want to predict uh, uh, whether a person will write which YouTube comment. Okay. So, uh, here let's suppose in my data, the first YouTube comment is hi, next YouTube comment is hello and so on. Now in YouTube comments, you can see the, you can see there are infinite set of possibilities. 
ओके एनीबडी कैन राइट एनी कॉमेंट द इनफाइनाइट सेट ऑफ पॉसिबिलिटीज इन यूट्यूब कॉमेंट्स सो फाइन यूट्यूब कॉमेंट्स कॉलम इज अ कंटिन्यूस कॉलम एंड विद इन कंटिन्यूस डज इट हैव न्यूमरिक और नॉन न्यूमरिक वैल्यूज इट हैज नॉन न्यूमरिक वैल्यूज सच अ टाइप ऑफ टारगेट कॉलम विच इज कंटिन्यूस एंड नॉन न्यूमरिक वॉज नॉट अलाउड इन ट्रेडिशनल ई आई दैट्स वाई जेन ई आई फील्ड हैड टू बी इन्वेंटेड गाइज इन जेन ई आई एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ जेन ई आई मॉडल इज वॉट इज बींग यूज इन चैट जीपीटी इन चैट जीपीटी एज अ आउटपुट okay the output that chat gpt gives is nothing but the prediction of that model so as a output do you get continuous values also i mean uh, what does it output it might output text maybe let's assume okay does it output a uh, text that has infinite set of possibilities right it can output anything so that means there internally the model that they are using there the, the target column is of continuous nature and it has which values numeric or non numeric you can see in chat gpt's output it outputs non numeric values so basically in chat gpt the model that is used has a target column that is continuous non numeric so continuous non numeric column was not allowed in a traditional ai model that's why gen ai field had to be invented the purpose of gen ai was just that to allow a continuous non numeric target column now how it does it that's a separate topic okay as uh, in our future webinars we'll have a, a webinar where we'll cover the internal working of gen ai so at that time you will understand okay but here i just wanted to give you an overview of gen ai okay that what was the limitation of ai field because of which gen ai had to be invented okay fine so guys these ai services that i was talking about both of these have been created by open ai company and they have gen ai models in them okay is just that this service has something called large language models okay which is capable of doing multiple things okay like uh, for example you wanted to summarize text you wanted to uh, uh, give the sentiment of a text and so on so in internally in a chat gpt in chat gpt tool you can see the model that you are using is nowadays gpt 4o previously uh, you are using uh, different version gpt 3.5 then gpt 4 came then gpt 4.0 came so all of these are different different models okay so those are large language models they can be used to do multiple tasks okay but they are slightly costly as well okay on the other hand in this service called fi3 service you will get access to small language models okay uh it at the end the end of the day it's a gen ai model only okay but it's only used for a small purpose like maybe only used for a certain purpose like summarization of documents that's it okay certain small language models will just be used to uh, uh, uh analyze the sentiment of a text that's it okay so they will be used for small purposes okay and this is slightly less costly okay so it's slightly cheaper fine so uh, with large language models you can do multiple tasks with the same uh, model whereas with small language models uh, you can do few tasks with the same model okay fine uh, so people were complaining that okay i wanted to do few tasks only so why should i use large language model because let's say i only want to use it to summarize document okay but this model is capable not only to summarize document but other things also okay so large language model costed more for example just as a example guys let's suppose you are the ceo of a company okay and you want to hire one back end developer one back end developer now as a ceo currently you have two choices with you person one knows front end and back end both person two knows only back end so guys your job can be done by person 1 as well as person 2 but which person will be more cheaper person 1 or person 2 which will be more cheaper for you as a ceo who will take less salary person 2 will take less salary right similarly guys this uh, here in this service the first one that i have highlighted over here it's only capable of doing certain things so it will be more cheaper okay whereas your this next service that i have highlighted over here is capable of doing more things so it will be more costly okay so remember that in the first service you have something called small language models and in the next service you have something called large language models 
Okay. So here I wanted to give you an overview that Azure has created AI models for you already, and it has um, divided those AI models into different categories or different services. So I explained the nine services over here. Now, guys, in your AI 102 exam, you might get questions asked from the these eight services. The first service, you can ignore it. Okay, for uh, that's not a part of your AI 900 curriculum. So you won't get any questions asked based on it. Okay, so you can expect questions asked in the AI 900 examination based on the remaining eight services. Today, what we'll do, guys, is we will see a demo of two services over here. One is speech service and next is document intelligence service. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's move on to speech service over here. Okay. And uh, uh, before we do that, guys, up till here, is it making sense to everyone? The overview of AI and how Azure has created multiple AI models and divided into different services, different categories. Yes. Okay. Saravanan says that, okay, we can say that Gen AI model. Uh, uh, now, uh, Saravanan, the term multi-model is different okay a multi model does not mean multiple use cases but saravanan your understanding is right that a large language model has multiple use cases a small language model has a single use case or few use cases but the term multi model would not be the appropriate term to apply over there that's a different thing different concept we'll have a webinar on that also where i will explain the internal working of gen AI model that how it does what it does and all of that. But the term multi-model should not be used. Okay. What is that term? Uh, I will have few webinars on the internal working of Genie. So at that time, it will be more clear. But term multi-model would not be the appropriate term to use over there. Okay. But your overall understanding is right. That large language models have multiple use cases. Small language models have few use cases. Now, Ankit has a doubt. Ankit says, I'm a beginner in machine learning and deep learning field. Should I master it before preparing the AI 900 certification? Nobody. Uh, here in this certification, you will not be expected any question based on how to create your custom AI models. You don't need to understand how to create custom AI models. Your Azure has already created ready-made AI models for you. All you need to do is understand how to use it. So particularly for AI 900 certification, you nobody, you can directly jump onto this certification even without knowing the internal working of machine learning approach and deep learning approach. Still, you will be able to pass your AI 900 examination. Okay, fine. Uh, any other doubt, guys, then do let me know. Fine. Apart from that, I don't see any other doubts. So I'm proceeding ahead, guys. Okay, so guys, as I mentioned, Azure has created AI models for you over here. There are ready-made AI models available on the Azure platform and they have been divided into different categories or different services. Today, we'll see demo of two such services. One is speech service. Second is document intelligence service. Let's talk about speech service. So guys, since I want to use speech service, in Azure, guys, there is a rule that whenever you want to use any service of Azure, you have to create a resource of that service. You have to create a resource of that service. Okay. So what I will do is, since I want to use speech service, I will go ahead and I will create a resource of that. Let's do it. So let me search for speech service in my search bar. I can see an option for speech service in the search result. Let me click on that option. And now what I will do is, since I want to use the speech service, I will create a resource of the speech service. Let me click on the create button to create a resource of speech service over here. The first field in the form is asking me to select subscription. Okay. Now guys, in your Azure account, you can create multiple subscriptions for different, different purposes. Let's suppose you are the CEO of a company, you are the head of a company, and you want to ensure that all the employees in your company get access to the Azure portal. So what you will do, you will create different subscriptions for different, different people. You will create one subscription, maybe for a person in the HR team. You will create another subscription, maybe for a person in the IT team and so on. Like this, different, different subscriptions you will create for different, different people in your company. Now, each subscription can have different amount of permissions set to it. For example, a person in the HR team is not going to do a lot of work in Azure. 
probably the, that HR person only wants to use Azure to store some data. So you will only give access to storage service in this subscription. Okay. Other services you will disable. Okay. So basically the point that I'm making is different subscriptions can have different permissions assigned to it. So for example, the next subscription that you are creating for a person in the IT team, IT person is going to do a lot of work in Azure. So for this person, the subscription that you will make, you will make sure that it has all the permissions. Okay. So like this for different, different subscriptions, you can assign different amount of permissions. Okay. Similarly, different different subscriptions can have different amount of money uploaded into it for example the first sub subscription that you create f created for a person in the hr team now that hr person is not going to do a lot of work in azure so let's say you are only uploading something like 10 dollars worth of credit into it whereas the second subscription that you created for a person in the it team the it person is going to do a lot of work in azure so for him you are uploading more amount of money into that subscription and like that. Okay. So the point that I'm making is different subscription will have different permissions assigned to it and different subscription can have different amount of money uploaded into it. So you have to select the subscription of your choice over here. Okay. So let me choose MSDN subscription only. I have two active subscriptions with me. The first one Azure pass subscription will get disabled after a month. Okay. Whereas this one uh, is given to me for permanent uh, duration by Microsoft. Both the subscriptions have been given by Microsoft only to me. Okay, is this that MSDN subscription was, has been given uh, to me for permanent duration, whereas Azure Pass subscription has been given to me only for or a month. Okay, after a month, even it will get disabled. You can see even the pre previous Azure Pass subscription got disabled, right? Uh, because they, uh, they have a period of, I mean, they have an activation, uh, they have a uh, usage of just a month, 30 days or 31 days. After that, they will get disabled. Okay. Fine. So over here, I'll choose MSDN subscription. Okay. Uh, then let me go ahead. And here, it's asking me to put my resource in some resource group. Remember, we are creating a resource of speech service. So here, I'm being asked to put that resource in some of the other resource group. So I can either create a new resource group or select an existing one. Let me create a new resource group. Let me call it webinar RG which stands for webinar resource group. After that, I am being asked to choose the region for my resource. Uh, here you can choose any region guys. Make sure to choose a region closer to your user just for better latency. Let's suppose you are creating this resource for a user in United States. Then you will choose a region closer to United States just for better latency. But one additional point to remember is that East US region has been lately suffering from traffic related issues. So that's why if possible, try to avoid East US region just so that you do not encounter that traffic related issues. Okay, so let me select any other region over here. I'll select West US. Okay, then I'm being asked to give a name to my resource. So let me give it a name. I will give it a name called speech. RES, which stands for speech resource. Then I'm being asked to choose the pricing tier for my resource. There are two pricing tiers available, free tier and standard tier. With free tier, you will not be charged for usage. With standard tier, you will be charged. However, the disadvantage of free tier is that it has a lot of limitations with respect to usage. Uh, that in a minute, you can only use this resource for this many times and so on. Okay, whereas in standard tier, many of those limitations do not exist. Okay. After this, so let me select standard tier over here. With this, some costs will be deducted, but that's fine. Uh, then let me move ahead and let me click on review plus create button. Now Azure will run a final validation in the backend just to check whether it can give me the things that I'm asking for. If the validation is successful, then the create button will be enabled. And now you can see it has been enabled over here. Let me click on this. And with this, what will happen is a resource of speech service will be created. So soon within a minute or so, a resource of speech service will be created for me. So we'll just wait for some time and soon a resource will be created. Till then, let me address the doubts in the chat. So where Gajendra has a question that after this session, will I get some certificate? So Gaj Gajendra, you will get a badge. Okay. So badge is different. Certificate is different. Badge means it's a sign that you have attempt, you have gone through the training. 
certification means that you have passed the examination okay so you will get a badge okay that you can uh, that will be integrated in your microsoft account and then you can share this badge on your any social media platform just to indicate that you have gone through this training so yes you will get something and that is uh, what you will get you will get a badge at the end okay that will be integrated in your microsoft uh, account gajendra says what to do for certificate gajendra you have to attempt the exam so that is a ai 900 exam so if you feel that you know all the concepts of the course then you can go ahead and attempt the examination okay so i'm giving you the link in the chat and here you can see below there will be a option to schedule the examination okay so for example in india i believe the cost is around uh, 3200 if i'm not wrong that's the certification cost let me just check yeah around 3600 okay so that's the certification cost so you can schedule it you can schedule it in two ways i mean you can attempt the exam by going to a exam center or else you can give the exam by sitting at your home itself okay so while scheduling you will get that option that do you want to give the exam in a exam center or do you want to give it at your home uh, at your home you can select the appropriate option okay and schedule the examination so once you pass the examination remember you will only get asked mcq questions in the exam there is no negative marking so make sure to attempt all the questions there is, because there is no negative marking if in case you uh, select a an answer that is incorrect not a issue there are no there is no penalty that is given there is no negative marking so you will get mcq questions asked in the examination the examination will be total of 1000 marks out of which you need to score at least 700 to pass it okay and you can expect anywhere around uh, 40 MCU questions. The number of MCU questions is never fixed, but averagely you can expect around 40 MCU questions. Each MCU question will have a different weightage. Some MCU question could be of 30 marks, some could be of 10 marks, some could be of 50 marks. It's just that during the examination, that weightage is not shown to you. That which question carries what weightage okay that this question is of 10 marks or 20 marks or 15 marks that is not shown to you during the examination so for you each question should be of equal importance okay fine so uh, rajendra asked how to what to get for the, uh, getting the what to do for getting the certificate so you have to schedule an examination once you pass the examination you will get an official certificate from microsoft okay gajendra asked for passing marks uh, the passing marks is 700 Okay, can we get the discount voucher? So Hanuma, you can reach out to the team, okay, and uh, get to know the procedure to avail the discount voucher. Okay, so you can contact our team. So uh, Archie is part of our support team. Uh, you would have heard her at the start of the uh, session today. You can reach out to her. Also, once our session ends, uh, she will come back and give you all the contact details through which you can contact our team. So you can contact our team and get to know more about the vouchers and all of that. Fine. Uh, so guys, moving on with our uh, main uh, agenda of today. Okay. So let's continue with our webinar. So guys, over here, our first point in our agenda was clear, right? We learned about the basics of AI. Now, second point in our agenda is to have a demo of speech service. So I created a resource of speech service. And now let me use the resource. Now, guys, there are two ways to use the resource. One is without code. If you want to use the resource without code, you just click on this button called Go to Studio. And you will be redirected to a studio where you can do that speech translation that you want without using any single line of code. So there will be some button through which you can record your speech. And that speech will be translated to any other language of your choice. Fine. So you can interact with the resource without code. However, you can also interact with the resource with code. Okay. I always prefer the with code option. The reason being that I can customize the results with code. See, using the without code approach also, you will get your results. Using the with code approach also, you will get your results. It's just that using the with code approach, I can customize my results. Okay. I can perform customization later on it. Okay. Fine. So let me go ahead. 
and let me show you the with code approach this is the approach that i prefer always so what i will do is i will create a folder over here and this is where all of our coding files will be present for this webinar i will call it webinar september 2024 okay and what i will do is i'll open a coding tool let me open a coding tool called visual studio and you will see shortly that my coding tool will open and it has opened over here and what i will do is i will make sure that all of the coding work that i do with this tool is done in that folder that i created so the folder that i created was webinar september 2024 right uh, that's where i want all of my work to happen okay fine now let me create a subfolder within this called speech and within this subfolder i will create a file okay so let me create a python file i will call it test.py this .py extension at the end of the file name suggest that suggest to my operating system that i want to create a python file okay so i'll write code in python programming language over here so what to do so guys what i want to do is currently i am in my local laptop i have a coding file over here and through this coding file i want to access uh, a resource of speech service which is there on azure now how will my local laptop access the resource that is there on azure for that i will have to do some authentication right some authentication i'll have to perform so let me go ahead and do that uh, we'll try to perform that authentication over here now in order to perform that authentication i will need few things so what are the things that i need i will need two main things first is the key of the resource and second is the region in which the resource lies by mentioning these two things i'll be able to perform authentication okay so let me get these two things over here one is my key of the resource and second is the region where the resource lies okay so what is the key of the resource so here guys you can observe there are two keys present you can use any one of them is this that one extra key is given to you for backup purposes just like at our home there are two keys right one one is for backup purposes similarly over here there are two keys available you can use any one of them it's up to you whether you use the first key or the second one it's completely up to you okay so let me use the second key over here i'll just go ahead and mention that key in my code the next thing that i want is i want information about the region where my resource lies so my region is west us so i'll just copy my region value and paste it in my coding file over here fine with help of these two things what will happen is i want to perform authentication okay with help of these two things i want to perform authentication so in order to perform authentication i will need a class which i will import over here okay i'll need a class which i will import from a library so from sklearn uh, sorry from azure folder there is another subfolder called cognitive services from this subfolder called cognitive services there is another subfolder called speech which i will reference as sdk okay now inside this subfolder called speech that i have referenced as sdk there is another subfolder uh, sorry not subfolder it's a file called translation and inside that file i have this python class called speech translation config so i'll go ahead and uh, call that class over here we'll go ahead and call that class and with help of the class i am basically performing authentication okay so first i'll pass the key of my resource second i will pass the region in which my resource lies okay and uh, fine and if the authentication is successful access to resource will be granted okay if the authentication is successful access to resource will be granted and once access is granted i just want to print a confirmation message to the user 
that access to resource has been granted okay if at all while trying to gain access i get a error then the compiler will stop at that line itself it won't go ahead to the previous line it will not go ahead so if i get a error at any line over here the compiler will stop the execution at this line itself let's see over here i'll try to run my coding file i'll click on run button okay it is asking me to select the python interpreter let me select python interpreter of 3.11 version okay and uh, now let me try to go ahead and uh, uh, try to run my code but here i will just have to make sure that i perform the uh, that i write my import statement correctly after that now let me go ahead and run my coding file and you can see access to resource has been granted so authentication was successful over here now what i want to do is after authentication is done now using the resource i want to do some translation okay so let's see what will happen so first guys what i will do is i will mention uh, to my resource that the speech that i am providing to you for translation is of which language so that information i will have to convey okay that i will tell my resource that whatever i will be speaking will be in english language whatever i will be speaking will be in english language let me mention that over here and in english, in english language also there are different different accents so one is uk accent us accent i obviously can't speak in uk accent so the closest accent over here i mean it's uh, closest accent would be us although my accent is not even close to us accent but out of all the other english accents i think us is the one that is more closer okay fine so i've mentioned that whatever i'll be speaking it will be in english language now from this language i want to do translation to other languages so i will go ahead and mention my target languages as well i will tell my resource that what are my target languages so i will say that i want to convert from english language to maybe something like hindi language so i'll mention the code for it which is hi then similarly from english language i might want to convert it to french language so i will write the code for french which is fr then from english language i want to convert it into spanish language so i'll write the code for spanish which is es then from english english language i might want to convert into kannada language so i'll write the code for kannada which is kn okay fine now let's go ahead and what will we do now is um i will ask uh my user that what is the target language that you want to choose okay so let me ask the user that out of the four specified target languages which one do you want to choose okay so i will say enter a target language i will say enter hi for hindi enter fr for french enter es for spanish and enter kn for kannada so i will ask the user to choose one target language of his choice okay fine and now whatever uh, input the user provides i will try to save it in this variable over here fine let me go ahead guys and let me see whether that uh, thing is being asked or not whether the user is asking whether the user is being asked to enter input currently i get a error over here and the error it seems is because of my code i guess there is a spelling mistake the spelling of language is not correct okay so after correcting the spelling it should work okay now let's go ahead let's clear the terminal and let's run the code again access to resource has been granted and you can see it is asking me to enter a target language just like i wanted now let me do one thing it's currently showing to me in one single sentence in order to make it more readable i will try to divide this into multiple lines over here that will be more readable for the user okay fine now let me go ahead let me run the code again 
you can see now uh, the same exact sentence is being asked to me across separate separate i mean it's divided into multiple lines over here fine now let me enter a target language let's say hindi so i'll write the code for it which is hi that particular code will be stored over here in this variable okay fine now what to do next so over here uh, i will put a condition that if the target language mentioned by the user is any of the uh, four target languages then only do the translation otherwise do not do the translation okay if the target language mentioned by the user is any of the four specified target languages then only do the translation okay otherwise else do not do anything just move forward pass okay so if the target language mentioned by the user is any of the four specified target languages then only do the translation otherwise do not do the translation so for doing the translation i will have to give my speech first so that speech i will give it with which microphone so i'll mention the settings over here that the speech that i'll be giving will be from my default microphone so i will say use my default microphone to get the speech okay so as a user i'll be speaking something the configuration of my audio that i'll be submitting to the resource i have mentioned it over here okay fine after this uh, let me make the resource ready to do the translation so i will have to write code for it to ready for it to be ready to do translation okay let me go ahead and let me mention it over here so for making it ready i will call this class called translation recognizer let me call that class over here so uh, uh, through this class i have to mention that which resource you want to make ready so i have said i will say that i have already gained access to one resource that resource i want to make it ready and to that resource you will give some speech so that translation can be done now what is the configuration of that speech that uh, the user will be giving so i have mentioned the configuration in the previous line already let me pass on that configuration over here okay with this what will happen is the resource will be ready to do the translation okay the resource will be ready to do the translation once the resource is ready to do the translation let me go ahead and let me uh, print to the user that user please speak now please speak now and whatever the user speaks i want my resource which is ready to do translation i want that resource to recognize the speech in one go to recognize the speech in one go okay once it takes the speech okay let's say continuously a user is speaking if there is a break then that means the user wants to stop okay so before the user takes a break whatever the user is spe speaking continuously take that speech do the translation and then i want to get the translation results back so let me save the translation results in this variable over here and then let me go ahead and let me print the raw results to you by default what will happen guys is that the resource does the translation in all the four specified target languages so for example you uh, try to pass on your speech internally what will happen guys that speech let's say which was in english language okay so i will just mention e and o here english language that speech of english language internally will be converted to text of english language that text of english language internally will be uh, uh, translated to text of the or target languages currently i have four target languages hindi french spanish and kannada and that text of uh, multiple languages will be converted to speech okay fine uh, fine and what i want to do is it will be converted to speech okay this is the workflow that will be followed over here now uh, let's see what has happened let me print the raw results over here in my code i have um, asked to print the raw results let's print it okay let me enter a target language over here let's suppose i am entering hindi then it will ask me to speak something so i will speak okay okay currently there is a error over here 
uh, it says ha huh, okay i guess uh, i should uh, correct the spelling it should be target languages okay so i am mentioning that if the target language mentioned by the user is any one out of the four specified target languages then only do the translation okay fine so there was a spelling mistake in my code i have corrected it let me enter a target language then the resource will ask me to speak something so i'll speak to it okay hello i am in a lecture of ai 900 okay so you can see what has happened over here it has done the translation and by default as i mentioned it did the translation in all the four specified target languages you can see the translation in hindi language you can see the translation in french language you can see the translation in spanish language you can see the translation in kannada language okay fine uh, now out of these four steps three steps are done right you took your speech internally that speech was converted to text i mean let me print that text for you okay if you are wondering whether that speech of english language was converted to text of english language yes so let me print that text to you over here so this is my original original text okay let me print it out and then below that i'll just print the raw results as it is okay let me run the code let me enter a target language i'll say hindi okay and then i will run my code let's see it will ask me to speak something so i'll speak something to the resource hello i am in a lecture of ai 900 okay so you can see my original text and that text has been translated to other specified target languages now guys i had mentioned at the st uh, start of this uh, demonstration that in order to work with the speech resource there are two ways one is the without code approach second is the with code approach with both the approaches you will get your results is just that using the with code approach you can do customizations so now let's suppose i want to do customizations that the text of english language was converted to text of all of your target languages out of all these target languages i only want to focus on the target language that the user wants okay so if the target language that the user wants is hindi only focus on hindi i don't want to see the rest of the translations okay so i want to do this customization so let me do that over here so i will say from the translations from the translations only get the translation in the target language that the user has specified okay and this will be the translation that you are getting in the target language that the user has specified okay so if the target language mentioned by the user is hindi only get the translation in hindi okay only get the translation in hindi okay fine now let's see over here whether that customization is happening or not as i mentioned to you there are two ways to work with the resource one is without code second is with code using both the approaches without code approach and with code approach you will get your results is just that using the with code approach you can customize your results so now i want to customize that instead of getting me instead of giving me the uh, translated text in all the four specified target languages give me the translated text only in the target language that the user wants So if the user wants the uh, has chosen a target language of Hindi, give me the translated text only in Hindi. Okay, then I'll print the translated text over here to you. Let me print it out. Okay, fine. Let's see. I'll try to run my code again. I'm entering a target language. and the you a resource then will ask me to speak something so i'll speak to it hello good morning how are you okay currently i got a error let's try to understand why is that error i guess there is a spelling mistake it should be translation so among multiple translations i want to get single translation based on the language that the user has selected okay so after correcting that spelling mistake it should work now let me enter a target language then the resource will ask me to speak so i will speak something to it hello good morning how are you all right and you can see this was our original text 
and we are also getting the translated text. So out of the four steps that are mentioned in the workflow, three steps are done, right? I took my speech in English language. I converted uh, internally. It was converted to text of English language. That text of English language was converted to text of your target language, which was Hindi language. Now that text of Hindi language, I want to convert it to speech. Okay, how to do that? How to do this fourth step over here? So in order to do it, what I'll do is I'll write more code. Okay. So in order to convert text to speech, you will have to use some of the voices that are recorded by Azure. Okay. So Azure has recorded many, many voices. Let me store information about those voices over here in this Python dictionary. So for Hindi language, they have multiple voices. One of them is called Madhur Neural. Okay. So let me show you. Okay. So one of them is called Madhur Neural. I'll just mention the code for it over here. And I will show you uh, that if, if in case you want to see the different, different voices, how you can see it. Okay. So let me search for this voice code. Let me search for this voice code in the Azure's documentation. And you will be able to see it. Okay. So in order to convert text to speech, uh, you will have to use some of the voices of uh, that are recorded by Azure. Okay. So one of the voices was Mandur Neural. You can see for Hindi, there are many, many voices. One of the voices is Madhur Neural. You can use any one out of these voices over here. It doesn't matter. It's just that these different, different voices have different pitch, different tone of speaking and so on. Okay. Some voices are of males. Uh, some of some voices are of female. Okay. And so on. So you can use any voice that you want. Just take the code for it and mention it. Um, in your file over here that you're working. I'll just give a link of this documentation in the chat for you over here. So you can go through this documentation if you want. Okay. So uh, you can see this voice code I've mentioned in my file. Similarly, if let's suppose the target language mentioned by the user is French, then I will have to use one of the French voices out there. So one of the French voices, um, if I remember correctly, is Henry Neural. Let me search for French. Henry Neural. Yes, you can see for French, one of the voices is Henry Neural. Okay, so I'll just take this voice code and mention it in my file over here. Then if the target language, sorry, I didn't want to run my code. One second. Let me exit huh. and let me clear the terminal. Okay, fine. And uh, so for Hindi, I have mentioned the voice code. For French, I have mentioned the voice code. Similarly, guys, if the target language mentioned by the user is Spanish, for Spanish also there is a voice code. And I will give you the voice code over here. For Spanish, I believe one of the voice code is Elvira Neural. Let me search for it. Yes, you can see for Spanish, one of the voice code is Elvira Neural. I will take this voice code and mention it in my file over here. Then similarly for Kannada, there is one voice uh, called uh, Gagan Neural. Okay. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention the voice code for it over here. Okay. If I just search over here for this voice code, just to prove to you that we do have such a voice code, you can say for Kannada, there are some voices. One of them is Gagan Neural. Okay, so over here, guys, I'll be using these voices to perform my last step, which is to convert text to speech. I've mentioned these voices, right? Now, let me go ahead and let me um, tell my resource that which voice code you have to use to do translation. Okay, but for doing that, I will have to, I mean, for doing that setting within the resource, I will have to perform authentication again. Okay. So let me go ahead and let me do that authentication again. So I will write code. I'll call the speech config class. To it, I'll pass my two things. One is the key of the resource. Second is the region where the resource lies. With this, what will happen is I will get access to do changes within the resource. Okay. So access to perform 
configuration in the resource. Once the access is given to us, then using it, what we will do is we'll make our changes. We will say that we'll say to the resource that okay, which uh, voice you have to use in order to do the text to speech translation. So I'll mention the voice name over here. I'll say get the voice name. Okay, I will say get the voice name from this dictionary. Okay, get the voice name from this dictionary and choose the voice based on the target language mentioned by the user. So if the target language mentioned by the user is Hindi, then choose Madhur neural voice code. If the target language mentioned by the user is French, choose Henry neural voice code and so on. Fine. Once this is done, I will make the resource ready to speak. Okay. Once I have performed this configuration that, okay, this is the voice code that you have to use. I will make it ready to speak. Okay. So let me make it ready to speak for that. I will have to use this class called speech synthesizer. And there I will mention the configuration that I've performed. Okay. Using that configuration, the resource will know that, okay, um, by using these configuration settings now I have to be ready to speak. So now that the resource is ready to speak, I will ask it to speak. Okay, now that it is ready, let me ask it to speak. So I'll ask it to convert text to speech. Which text? This translated text, I would want it to convert to speech. And whatever is the speech, I want to get it so that I can hear the speech back. That's it. That's all code I had to write. That's it. And now what I will do is I'll run my code and even the fourth step will be performed for me. Now, in order for you to uh, hear the speech, I will have to do one thing. While sharing my screen, I'll have to do it in such a way that you can hear my system sound also. So let me unshare the screen and let me share it again. But this time I will share it in such a way that you can hear the system sound also. I have selected that setting. And now have a look. I'll run my coding file. I'll run my coding file. It is asking me to enter a target language. So I will do that. Let me enter a target language over here. Okay. And let me enter a target language of HI. Okay. That means Hindi. Fine. Let me go ahead. Okay. And by the way, in order for me to hear, I'll make sure uh, that it's uh, the voice is not on mute. Okay. Fine. Now let's let's proceed. I have entered a target language. The resource will ask me to speak. So I'll speak something to it. Hello. We are in a webinar session of AI 900. Okay, currently I got the error because of this spelling mistake. This P should be of lowercase, not uppercase. Okay, after this, it should work. Let me run the code again. I am asked uh, to enter a target language. I'll do that. Then the resource will ask me to speak. So I'll speak something. Hello, I'm in a webinar of AI 900. Hello, I'm in AI 900 webinar. Mein hun. Okay, guys, were you able to hear the translation? I was able to hear it. Were you able to hear? I don't know what you guys, whether that sound reached to you or not. Were you able to hear it? Yes. Okay. Fine. So this was the demo of speech service. We know speech service is used to convert speech from one language to another. And you can see over here. Okay. The same code, if I send it to you, you will also be able to do that speech translation. Okay. Fine. So guys, this was how you can uh, do uh, the, uh, speech translation. So I wanted to give you a demo of speech service and we have done that over here. Now what we'll do guys is we'll take a short 15 minute break. We'll come back after 15 minutes and move on to our demo of second service. Okay. Uh, Bhaskar says how to install Azure libraries. So Bhaskar, in order for this, you just have to write this code over here, pip install Azure dash cognitive services dash speech. Okay, this is the code that you have to write in order to install the library for this lab that I performed. I'll copy it and paste it to you in the chat. I've done that over here. So this is the code that you will have to write. This is the command that you will have to write to install the library for this particular lab. Okay, just write pip install and then the name of the library. Here a library was Azure dash cognitive services that speech. 
ओके आई हैव ऑलरेडी डन दिस इंस्टॉलेशन सो आई वोंट डू इट अगेन फाइन सो अप टिल हियर आई होप द फर्स्ट डेमो वाज क्लियर द फर्स्ट डेमो वाज रिलेटेड टू स्पीच सर्विस आई होप दैट वाज क्लियर नाउ विल टेक अ शॉर्ट 15 मिनट ब्रेक विल कम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक गाइस एंड देन विल मूव ऑन टू आवर सेकंड डेमो ऑफ टुडे दैट सेकंड डेमो विल बी रिलेटेड टू डॉक्यूमेंट इंटेलिजेंस सर्विस so we'll see that once that demo is done then we'll end our webinar for today okay so let me start the timer of 15 minutes and we'll come back after a short break so you can refresh yourself we'll come back after the break and we'll see demo of our second service for today let me start the timer okay we'll come back after the break guys till then i'll just be on mute
welcome back to the session everyone hope all of you guys are back after the break now let's resume before resuming let me address some of the queries in the chat one student is asking about the recording yes guys we'll provide the recording uh, so the recording will be available on our youtube channel okay so you can refer our youtube channel soon the recording will be uploaded over there gajendra is asking for my linkedin id uh yes gajendra i'll share my linkedin id soon however if you just search for smith shah synergetics you will get it but don't worry at the end of the session i will provide my linkedin id so if you want to connect with me you can do that also will provide our contact details uh, social media details of synergetics as well uh, which is the company for which i'm working so if you want to connect with us you can go ahead and do that we'll provide our social media links at the end of the session soon okay so guys let's proceed with our agenda so guys if you remember there were three points in our agenda first point was to cover basics of ai which we have done right let me open the whiteboard where i had written the agenda so there were three points in our agenda today first point was to cover the basics of ai which we have done second point was to see a demo of speech service now third point is to see a demo of document intelligence service let's do that we know document intelligence service has ai models within it through which we can go ahead and extract information from uh, documents whether it's a invoice document or aadhar card document pan card document and so on okay let's uh, see how to work with document intelligence service we know in azure there is a rule that whenever you want to work with any service of azure you have to create a resource of that service so if i want to work with document intelligence service i will have to go ahead and create a resource of it let me do that let me create a resource of document intelligence service so i have clicked on the create button to do that once i click on the create button i am redirected to a form that i have to fill let me fill in the details of the form the first field in the form is asking me to select subscription i have explained to you what this subscription field is so i will select any subscription of my choice let me stick to msdn subscription only then i am being asked to put my resource that i am creating in some of the other resource group so either you can create a new resource group or select a existing one let me do that now guys there are many benefits of putting a resource in a resource group okay by the way it's mandatory that you have to put your resource in some resource group but there are many benefits so let me show you the benefits so let's suppose you are working on a project for which you had to create 20 resources let's say one resource was of speech service second resource was that of document intelligence service third resource was that of sql service and so on there are many other services that are not related to ai also there are many services that azure offers so let's suppose like this you created 20 different resources now the project got over after 6 months so now after 6 months these resources are of no use for you so what you will do you will delete these resources right if they are of no use to you you will try to delete them so that no further to cost is incurred uh, because of these resources so instead uh, you what you can do is maybe you can go to resources one by one click on the delete button to delete them right you can do that but it will be very tedious for you you have to go into each of these 20 resources individually click on the delete button to delete the resources instead why don't we have resources that belong to the same project inside the same exact resource group why don't we have resources that belong to same project inside the same exact resource group and when the time for deletion comes i can directly go to the resource group and with a single click of the button i can delete the resource group with that all the resources in that resource group will automatically get deleted it's like if i delete a folder then all the files in the folder automatically get deleted right similarly if i delete a resource group then all the resources in that resource group automatically get deleted so one benefit of resource group is life cycle management that if resources have the same life cycle then you should put those resources inside the same exact resource group what is the second benefit okay let's suppose you are working on a project for which you had to create 20 resources now let's say you want to calculate the total cost incurred for your project now what you can do maybe you can uh, check the cost of each resource one by one that okay for the first resource um uh, azure charged you 5.2 dollars for the second resource azure charged you 
31 dollars for the third resource to charge you that much and so on then after that what you have left to do is you will have to take the sum of all the individual costs and that's how you will arrive at the total cost incurred for your project okay now that could be very tedious right going to each of the 20 resources one by one then seeing their individual cost okay instead why don't we have resources that belong to the same project inside the same exact resource group and when the time for cost calculation comes i can directly see just by a click of the button what is the total cost of all the resources in that resource group just by a single click of the button so resource group helps me for better cost management as well like that there are many benefits of resource group in short just remember that resource group helps you for better management of resources okay so here i was creating a resource of document intelligence service i put that resource in some resource group next i'm being asked to choose the region for my resource make sure to choose a region closer to your user just for better latency uh, however over here i'm avoiding east us because in east us lately i've been observing there are a lot of traffic issues so i will avoid east us for now let me choose any other region like let's say west us after that i'm being asked to give a name to my resource so let me give a name i will call it document scanning resource okay then i'm being asked to choose the pricing tier for my resource there are two pricing tiers available free and standard with free tier you will not be charged for any usage however with standard tier you will be charged however with free tier there are a lot of limitations many of those limitations do not exist in standard tier so let me select standard tier for now and then let me click on review plus create button screen not visible is that the case for everyone guys no right okay so i guess uh, okay some people are able to see okay so maybe uh, those who are unable to seek and try to join the meeting again okay fine all right so guys we are trying to create a resource of document intelligence service let me click on the create button so that azure starts the creation process it will take around two to three minutes to complete its creation and once the resource of our document intelligence service is created then we'll see what to do next then i'll try to use the resource okay gajendra says it's blurred maybe that might be i don't know whether it's um, uh, an issue from my side or your side what about blurring uh mohammed mohammed for you it's visible for you it's blurred or working fine gajendra says it's blurred clear okay fine so that that means it's not an issue from my end okay maybe uh, the participants internet has some issue okay not an issue from mind okay so guys we were creating a resource of document intelligence service that resource has been created let me go to the resource now there are two ways to interact with the resource one is using the without code approach for that you just have to click on this button called go to studio where you will be redirected to a different studio and there you can just uh, pass your documents by clicking on the upload button and uh, those documents will be uh, scanned for you and you can extract any information out of it that you want so that is interacting with the resource without code but you can also interact with the resource with code let me show you how to do that okay so what i will do is i will open my coding tool which is visual studio there i will create a new subfolder okay one second i'll create a new subfolder over here ha huh. and i will call it document intelligence okay here let me create a coding file i'll call it test.py you can name that coding file anything that you want you can give a name of abc if you like it any name you can pass okay now guys what i want to do is i want to go ahead and uh, currently my code that i have written is in my local laptop now through this coding file i want to gain access to a resource of document intelligence service and that resource is there in azure so how can 
my code in uh, my local laptop access a resource that is there in azure so for that i will have to perform some authentication so here let me do that let me go ahead and let me perform that authentication over here so in order to do it what i will do is um, i will need few things uh, first thing that i will need is the key of my resource and second thing that i will need is the endpoint of the resource different uh, resources have different ways through which you can gain access a uh, page resource uh, required key and region yeah this resource this resource requires key and endpoint okay so fine let me pass these two things over here so you can see uh, the key present over here you can take any one out of these two keys okay doesn't matter which key you use then for the endpoint which is nothing but the link of my um a uh, uh, resource so let me go ahead and let me pass that link over here using these two things i'll try to perform authentication now in order to do that i will need help of a class which i will import so from azure folder there is a sub folder called ai inside that sub folder there is a file called form recognizer and from that file i will try to import this class called document analysis client now this is the class that will help me to perform authentication the first thing that i will pass is the endpoint of the resource let me pass that the second thing that i will pass is the key of my resource but i can't pass the key directly i will have to pass it with help of a function which i will import over here so from azure folder there is a sub folder called core inside that sub folder i have a file called credentials and from that file i will try to import this function called azure key credential and through this function i will try to pass my key of the resource i can't pass the key directly over here different resources have different rules for authentication okay fine and now through this function let me pass the key of my resource so now using these two things first is the endpoint of the resource second is the key of the resource using these two things i'll try to perform authentication if the authentication is successful then access to resource will be granted and once access is granted i just want to print a confirmation message to the user that access to resource has been granted okay uh, sorry i wanted to run a different coding file uh this one right this is what i want to run now there are two ways to run guys one you can click on the run button okay that is one way to run okay and you can see access to resource has been granted another way to run is you can just write a command saying which python file you want to run so i will say my python file is inside of this folder called document intelligence so let me go to that folder now you can see my terminal is pointing to that folder now i will say please run my python file called test.py and let's see whether access to resource has been granted yes it has been granted so multiple ways to run the file you can click on the create button or you can run a command to run the file both of the approaches work okay so guys what i want to do is now i want to go ahead and perform my task which is to scan the document so which document i will scan let me show that to you so i have a invoice document with me and that is the one that i will scan let me show you that document okay here we go and guys here is our document it's a invoice document i'll be scanning this okay and um, after scanning i would want my model to give extract information out of it so i won't i mean i, I won't be manually scanning this uh, document i will let the ai model scan the document for me and extract information out of it fine let's see how to do it now in order to do that in order to do that first thing that i will need is i will need the id of the ai model that i want to use so guys for different documents they have built different uh, models for working with invoice document they have a model called pre built invoice similarly for working with aadhar card document they would have a separate model and so on just to prove that to you let me go ahead and let me search for this in the azure documentation 
okay you can see for uh, scanning invoice we have a doc uh, we have a model called pre built invoice similarly guys for working with let's say uh, your um aadhar card okay we have different model okay so for example you can see here it has mentioned the documentation you can scan aadhar card pan card so indian aadhar card indian pan card okay then driving license from india and so on now for doing this you will use a model with a name called pre built id document so guys for different different uh, documents we have different different models made over here okay for working with our um, invoice document we have a model called pre built invoice okay and this is the model that i will use so i've passed the documentation link in the chat for you you can refer it if you want okay so this is the model that i will use fine so i have mentioned that the next thing that i will do is i'll mention the information about uh the language in which the content of file is written so i will say that it's written in english language so i'll mention the code for it then the url of the document so guys you can it's not necessary that you download the document uh, in your laptop and then only uh, you can pass that document for scanning no uh, even if you do not download the document if you just pass the url of the document that should work so guys this document i obtained from github this invoice document i obtained from github there is the link for it okay and i will just paste the link over here just to prove to you that from this place i got my invoice you can see my invoice is downloaded once i uh, pasted that link in my web address okay i'll paste that link in the chat for you over here so you can get the document if you want okay so what i will do is i'll mention the url of the document so it's not necessary that you download it manually you can just pass the url of that document that you want to scan fine now let me write the code for scanning so now i will say to my resource that okay now that i have obtained access to you please go ahead and begin the analyzing process begin analyzing the document from the url so i'll mention the name of the model or the id of the model that will be used for scanning then the url of the document that i want to scan then the language in which this file was written so it's english language okay with this analysis will be done and now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and obtain the results of that analysis whatever is the result i will store over here in this variable called result from resource now let me print the raw result that raw result will not make sense to you at first okay currently let me clear the terminal and uh, let me run my file called test.py by the way i have to go to document intelligence folder and then run it over there okay currently i get a, a error which says that the spelling of begin is wrong so it should be b e g i n okay so i have done that spelling mistake now let me run the code and again it says there is some issue and what is the issue i guess the from spelling is wrong it should be f r o m okay so after correcting the spelling mistake it should work okay let's print the raw result the raw result will not make sense to you at first and you can see the raw result over here big result you are getting okay it has tried to analyze information from that invoice fine what i will do is um this result i will convert okay and by the way let's see uh, information of i don't want any other information i will say only information uh, that you obtained from the document you want other logs maybe you do not want okay let's see what is being obtained over here even this is raw right now so for you it won't make sense but don't worry we'll try to um, refine that raw result okay fine all right now uh, what i want is uh, here currently i will run okay let me convert this entire result to a dictionary okay let me do that to a dictionary in order to do that i will use the enumerate function 
I will and I will convert this result raw result to a dictionary so that it's more readable to me. After converting it to dictionary, I will say only give me information about the receipt fields. Okay. So for which receipt for which fields you have uh, extracted information. So over here it will print out. Uh, that for which fields it has extracted information and let's see that over here so you'll get information of different fields so it will say that uh, okay currently there is an error and let's see why is that error okay currently uh, i should uh, we know a dictionary is a combination of key and value pairs that key and value sh should be separated by comma okay fine and after this uh, my code should work and have a look, it will print the uh, names of the fields to you for which scanning has been done. And over here, I don't want to print the earlier thing. Let me remove that. Okay, because I don't want that raw result to be displayed to me. I only want the names of the fields for which it has extracted information. And it will show me the names of the fields over here. So it will say it has extracted information for amount due field. It has extracted information for subtotal field. It, extra it has extracted information from for invoice ID field and so on. Now for each of the fields, what value, what value it has extracted? Let me go ahead and let me print it out over here. I will say, get me the value for a field called invoice ID. Now we know in my document guys, we know in my document, invoice ID is INV 100. Let's see if the model, if our AI model also thinks the same or not. I'll just go ahead and print this out. Let's see if it prints AI, uh, INV 100. If not, that means the model is doing something wrong. We know that in the invoice, the invoice ID is INV 100. Let's see if the model also thinks the same. Does it print INV 100 for us? If not, that means the model is doing something wrong. Currently, I get an error. And what is the error? Invoice ID. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to give me the value of this field. So let me write a full code. Give me the value of this field. Okay. And let's see now. It should print INV100. Currently, I get an error again. Okay. I guess I will have to mention my field within quotes. Let me do that. It's not a variable, right? So I will have to mention it within quotes. Now it should work. So I'm trying to get the value of invoice ID field. We know value of invoice ID field is INV100. Let's see if the model thinks the same. And yes, the model also thinks it's INV100. Okay, so here I'll just mention it in a proper manner that the invoice ID is so and so. Similarly, let me print value of any other field that you want. Let's suppose we want uh, the vendor name. I know the vendor name mentioned in the invoice is Contoso Limited. Let's see if the if our model also thinks the same. So I'll say give me the value of this field called vendor name. So I'll say vendor name is. And let me print it out over here. So I'll say give me the value for this field called vendor name. And let's see if the model thinks that the vendor name is Contoso Limited. If not, that means the model is doing something wrong. It should say that vendor name is Contoso Limited. Let's see if it does that. And you can see my model also thinks that vendor name is Contoso Limited. So you can see what we are doing over here is that we are passing document uh, for uh, the document intelligence service. The document intelligence service has AI models within it through which it will scan the documents for you. And then you can extract any information out of it that you want. Okay. So like this, guys, I have scanned, uh, I have sent one document. Like this, you can, through code, you know, you can pass uh, multiple documents. Maybe you can use a run a for loop over here. In each iteration of the for loop, you will pass one one document at a time and so on. Okay, so like this, um, you can do. Okay, and uh, with this, the benefit is that you don't have to scan your document manually. You are letting the AI model scan the document to, uh, for you. You can pass any number of documents, 10,000 documents, 1 lakh documents. Okay, now 
assume a scenario where you are a single person scanning those 10000 documents manually it will be very tedious for you instead you are letting the ai model scan the document for you and you can extract any information out of it that you want for different different documents it has created different different models for invoice document there is a different model for pan card document there is a different model for tax document there is a different model and so on i have mentioned the documentation of that in the chat for you so you can you can refer it okay so with this guys is the demo of document intelligence service clear is it clear guys uh, saravanan asks what is a endpoint endpoint is nothing but a link through which you can access the resource it's nothing but a link okay endpoint is nothing but a url through which you can access the resource you might wonder why did we not mention the url in the previous demo related to speech service because if you see over there guys have a look at your speech resource i will go to the speech resource okay let me go over there you might wonder why in the speech resource that we not mention a url let me show you that have a look at the url of the speech resource okay have a look at it over here one second let me write it okay i did not intend to go to the next tab okay let me go back it is asking me to log in again and have a look at the url of these speech resource you might wonder why did we not mention it so guys have a look at the url of the speech resource okay this is the url this is the endpoint and have a look at it over here i'll write it in red color the link is https colon double forward slash then the region name you have to write your region name rest of the things will remain the same in the endpoint okay this rest of the uh, things in the endpoint will remain the same dot api dot cognitive dot microsoft dot com that will remain the same only thing that is changing is the region name okay so there in the speech resource we pass the region name okay we pass the region name and based on that the endpoint was created automatically internally the endpoint was created so this class was creating the endpoint automatically okay so endpoint is nothing but the url through which you can access the resource so even in speech resource internally a url is being created is this that we are not passing the url ourselves internally using the region name it is creating that endpoint it is creating that url so url is a link through which you can access the resource you have to pass a link right to access something that okay i want to access facebook then there is a link of facebook facebook dot something right https colon double four slash facebook facebook dot com some link will be there so url uh, uh, endpoint is nothing but the url through which you can access something okay ha huh, it will be url only lakshmi uh, yes so over here krishna uh, swami has a doubt yes it will be a url only okay abbasi says instead of github link can we ha uh, absolutely absolutely abbas it can be a link of your azure storage account you can pass that not a issue absolutely okay tejas says uh, tejas no need uh, you just pass your document data just pass the document as it is no need to convert it into any other format just pass the document as it is okay ha huh, somebody is asking me to give get the date of the invoice okay so we know in the invoice the date is something right it's mentioned let's get the date from our ai model okay what does our ai model feel okay i will i will ask it to get the invoice date okay so let me mention it in my code i'll say invoice date is okay let me get the value for the invoice date field and let's see what what does it give to me soon it will give the result to me and it says the invoice date is this one 2011 so 15th of uh, november 2011 and you can see in our actual invoice also is the same thing 15th of november 2011 15th uh, sorry uh, where did it go 2011 uh, or what what was the date sorry 2000 not 11 2019 my mistake guys that's what our ai model has given and you can cross check 2019 15th of uh, november 2019 same exact date okay 15th of november 2019 fine so over here like this you can get value of different different fields so guys uh, did uh, the 
uh, a demo of second service also makes sense to you? What are the regions that are available? Many, many regions. East US, West US. There are regions from uh, like India. Okay. Uh, just to show to you, if I create a resource of speech service over here, many regions are there. You can see many, many regions. Australia is. There are some regions in India. Okay. You can see Geo India West. There are some regions in Japan. Many, many regions. Uh, Anil, uh -huh. for you, Anil, first, uh, you have to install the library. So, Anil, in your case, um, you will have to install this library by running this code. pip install, then the library that we used. So, here I use this library, Azure AI Form Recognizer. So, you will just write Azure-AI-Form Recognizer. This is the command that you will write to install the library. Once the library is installed, then from that library, you can in import your classes, you can import your functions that you want. Okay, so first you have to install the library and this is the command Anil that you can run to install the library. Okay, fine. Any other doubt guys? Any other doubt? Up till now making sense? I have already got confirmation from some people. Saying yes, okay. I can see thumbs up from Nishant as well. Okay, fine. So guys, in our agenda, we wanted to cover three things. First was the basics of AI, which we have done. Second was to see the implementation of speech service, which we have done. Third was to see the implementation of document intelligence service. So that was it for our today's webinar, guys. I hope it uh, it was you little useful to you. You understood something of value. Like this, guys, every Saturday we conduct webinars. They are free webinars on different, different topics. Soon, uh, maybe on some day, we'll convert, uh, conduct webinars uh, on... Uh, uh, gen ai so the internal working of gen ai okay how does it work internally what are the concepts that are used okay internal working of machine learning models internal working of deep learning models okay so every saturday we conduct webinars so uh, do uh, stay in touch on our social media platform archie will give you a link of a social media platform you can connect with us over there okay and um, yeah, you can get to know that on which date, which webinars uh, have been scheduled and you can take part in it if you want to. Okay, uh, the good thing is after once you attend the webinar, you also get a badge indicating that you have uh, attended this training. That badge will be integrated in your Microsoft uh, account and that badge then you can share it on any other social media platform that you like, like LinkedIn or any other platform. You can share your badge. Okay, somebody was asking for my social media, uh, LinkedIn ID. Okay, so let me search for that. I'll give you a link of my um, LinkedIn ID. Also, you can uh, connect uh, to the social media accounts of Synergetics as well. Let me give you my LinkedIn ID also. Okay, fine. So that was it for our today's webinar, guys. I hope uh, uh, it was of some value to you. You understood. Uh, what we did in this webinar. Thank you for attending and bye guys. So yes, Archie, you can take over from here. Uh, hello guys, please don't forget to fill this feedback form before leaving the session.